Hello, Jim Hodges here, Izzy here. Izzy is a one-year-old German wire-haired pointer, came in for our residency program. Very smart girl, but she is crazy as crazy can be. She is high drive, high play drive, high prey drive, very excitable, very distractible. Guess what? She's a hunting dog. You know, one of the things I like to tell my clients, I've done these GSPs and hounds and other working dogs, there's a time and place for everything. We want our dogs to hunt when, when it's time to hunt, but we also want them to listen to us and be a family dog. Well, when we get a high drive, high drive dog like this, it takes a little bit of work. We have to use obedience. I believe obedience is so important because it teaches them that they have to obey in that moment of time. If we're doing it correctly, it's going to get that focus in that moment of time. We're not here to intimidate, dominate, break her spirit, hurt her, or have her fear us, which a high drive dog will really test your patience, okay? You can't do that, you have to be in control. But uh, we wanna let her know through slow life, taking our time, that there are things to do. You're gonna see, she's, uh, as I told her, told her owner the other day, she is in the top 10, 20% of high drive, highly excitable, distractible dogs there are. She's come a long way in nine to 10 days. She's got a long way to go. Are we gonna remove this? No, I think it would be terrible to do it as part of her instinct. We're not gonna try to break her spirit, but we are gonna try to control it. So we're gonna work. I'm gonna use hand signals with her. I'm gonna use verbals. I'm gonna try to explain to you what's going on. One of the things I'm not gonna do is, is work her real fast. She needs exercise, she needs play, she needs obedience, and she needs them all independently and all together to try to take that edge off. One of the things that we've seen with her is when, when we can do all those things, she gets pretty mellow as the day goes on for her, okay? Mellow doesn't mean mellow like with most dogs. It means controlled mayhem, okay? But when we don't get to work with her, because we've had a lot of rain, she's still very anxious, got something to uh, feeding her to want her to do. We have to be patient. We never give a command unless we know she's gonna do it or we can make her do it, okay? And we wanna try to be positive. As hard as that may be, we want to be positive with her. All right, you ready? So we're gonna work with her, listen, watch what I do, and I think this will help you. With a high drive dog, obedience is so important. Let's go. Good girl, Izzy. That's a good girl. So you notice I'll praise her. I want to praise her when she's doing what we ask her to do. The let's go is she's walking with me. I step off, she needs to follow with me, okay? She cannot pull. If she started to pull me up in front, off to the side, I would tap the leash. No, let's go. And then provide a little bit of praise. If, as you watch this video, you're going to see she's on the hunt. She's on the prowl the whole time. That's okay, as long as she listens to what we're doing, okay? Let's go. Sit. Hand signal for sit. Good girl. Sit means hold it. She has to hold that sit until I release it. Now watch. Good girl. I broke her. She came to me. I pet her. All right. Now, if she did not sit when I sit. Good girl. If she did not sit or if she got up by the sit, I would go, no, sit. Great. Okay. That was a consequence, people. I'm not here to intimidate or dominate. Now, there are levels to consequence, but they're not done haphazardly. They're not done when we're emotionally out of control. It's primarily instruction, okay? We want our dog to be happy. We want to keep them balanced and wanting to work with us, okay? Let's go. So if I ask her to SIT and she doesn't do it, sit. I would have gone, no, sit. And then good girl, I'd have come back and prayed. Remember, she holds that command until I release her. The next thing I may do, down. Hand signal from the side is down. If she didn't down then or she popped up, instead of popping up on the leash, I would have popped down to the ground. No, down. Great. One of the things that I think probably one of the biggest things my clients have a hard time with, and, and it's understandable because they've done other things throughout their life, is making sure when they do provide a consequence, they go, eh, no, with the tap. We're trying to teach her, communicate with her physically and verbally that she's done something wrong. Just like when she does something right, it's words, touch, treat, toy, okay? We wanna be positive with it. We don't have to scream when she does something wrong, we just let her know what's happening and we go from there. And you see, I just tap the leash. 
Does that bother her? No, because we're not here to hurt her. We're here to instruct her that we're the leader. Let's go. So you saw the DOW at the end from the front, sit from the side. Good girl. Down. That's down from in front. Good. Sit. That's a good girl. Now she holds that up. Good girl. Now you see, you go back and look. She wants to get up, but she's holding it. That tells me she's understanding and learning. Okay? Good girl. Let's go. See, I can go to any other command I want to whenever I come out of it. Sit. Good. Come. She comes. Good girl. And sits in front of me. Pray. Her owner doesn't really care if she sits in front of her, uh, in front of, of him. And that's fine. It could be, come. And, but see, I've taught her to do that. But you don't have to do it. As long as she comes to you and the target is right here, that's all we want. Good girl. Break. And then I step back. And you notice on the break, did she sit when she came to me? No. But that break is so important. It teaches our dog when we step away like I just did to we're the center of the universe. It also, and I always have a target here, it's also on the recall command, the target here. Her drive is so high that we want to practice this. Come. Good girl. On leash. Because if she did not come to me then, I would have not. I'd have tapped the leash to me like that and told her to come. Tapped right to me. Break. Okay. But when she gets off leash, she gets so distracted. One of the things we're doing by doing that is trying to teach her that she has to come to us at a moment's notice. And on leash, we can tap the leash. Come. I didn't need to. Good girl. Break. But if she was off leash and she was 20 or 30 feet away and we did this with uh, her owner, the come command is not enough. We need to be able to get her attention. So what we would do then is go, Izzy, hey, come. And then once she commits to coming to us, we would tell her to come. We would give her a toy. We'd give her a treat when she got to us. And then, bring, we would release her. I hope that makes sense. Watch some of my other videos as well. Hand signal for the come command is like this. If she doesn't come on leash, we tap towards us. If she's off leash, we get her attention with the toy, with the treat, or just our voice, okay? Good. Next command, place. Places to get on the bed. Lay down, sit down, stand up. I don't care what she does as long as she stays on the bed. Correct that. If there's a squirrel or a cat in the bushes, she stays on the bed, but I don't want her inching off of the bed either. So if she started to come off the bed, in the beginning, I'm going to do everything with a long, loose leash. I would, see, saw that bite? That redirected her right off after nine days. Hopefully, if we go, eh, no, tap the leash, before long, that word or that vocalization will help. So she's in a place command. She can do this for an hour or two at a time. The problem with her and her anxiety is, after a period of time, she may start to whine a little bit. We ignore it or we bite it. I recommend that we ignore it because if we give credence to that whine and release her, she learns that that's part of her life. I don't mind that right now. As I said, as long as she doesn't start to crawl off. Of course, being inside, she's not gonna have these smells that she's got out here. Right, let's go. Good. Good. Next command, heel. Right here beside me. The heel command is she's in a box beside me. I start to move. She stays right beside the heel. Watch me step off. Turn back around. And when I stop, she sits. Good girl. That's when I praise her. I step off and she holds it. Right. The other command is to, to load up so that she can get in your truck or your car. Or if you wanted her on a piece of furniture, I don't recommend that with her, but if that's okay with you, fine. But I wouldn't allow her to get on the furniture without you commanding her to do it. And what would you do? Okay, baby, load up. Good girl, good girl, right. So we work real slow in our commands. Uh, we pause between them, and when we pause and we're slow, 
we're causing her to have to slow down. Yes, there are times we work fast. There's no, no problem with that. But when we're slow and we're not moving fast through all the commands, she's having to, to pause and do the things we ask her to do because she knows we're in control. You know, if you need me, you pick up the phone, 336-945-3232, okay? I'm here for you. There's never a charge for a follow-up as long as you come to me. I think she's got a, a great dog already, very smart, as you see with the obedience. She knows how to do her obedience. She just caught, gets caught up with her instincts. We learn to try to control those a little bit better. We also try to find outlets with her for that, with toys, with controlled areas where she can't get away or get hurt. I truly believe that uh, I have her off leash, and I've already demonstrated this. I could be 10, 20 feet away from her even now, and she wouldn't go, as long as I was on top of my game. If I get her 30, 40 feet, then I've got to use the other tricks to get her to hopefully want to come to me more than whatever that play or prey is, okay? I thank you so much. If you need me, give me a call. Take care. Bye-bye.